in this lecture uh, we will study about uh, a standard of uh, security in the wireless network that is web web stands for wired equivalent privacy web is a first layer security mechanism that was introduced in the standard 802.11 uh, that is a standard which is uh, given by the ieee ieee 802.11 standard and uh, it was first introduced uh, in this standard it is a first link layer standard to provide the security level compared uh, to that of a physical wire so it was assumed that web was providing or web provides same security as that of the wired network so that's why it is named as web so it provides security same as that of wired networks okay so that's why it is named as wired equivalent privacy this web standard wired equivalent uh, privacy enforces certain features to provide the security to the data in the wireless networks and what are those features those features are confidentiality integrity and access control so first is confidentiality which means we have encryption integrity which means uh, we are uh, uh, having some uh, checksum kind of mechanism here and access control means to authenticate so all the necessary features which are required for the security of data are included in this web and web enforces these things with the help of certain parameters so what is what are that they are encryption confidentiality is achieved by using encryption integrity is uh, in achieved by using a checksum mechanism and access control is through authentication okay and uh, in encryption what happens web encrypts data using rc4 based stream cipher so here we use rc4 stream cipher that we have already studied in the smittering encryption so rc4 stream cipher is used for the encryption process and uh, we achieved confidentiality by using this key uh, stream generation algorithm that is rc4 and uh, in the uh, for the integrity uh, what we uh, compute here we compute here checksum and crc that is cyclic redundancy check scheme is used to compute the integrity checksum for the messages the crc checksum is transmitted along the payload we have the uh, our play payload or the plain text and this crc checksum is appended so checksum is appended with the payload uh, and is transmitted along with the this payload or the plain text and at the receiver side we again compute this crc cyclic redundancy check code is applied to cal calculate the uh, this checksum and then this checksum and this this checksum they are compared if they are equal then communication is without any error if they are not equal then communication is having some flaws some error has occurred in the communication some bits are changed during the transmission okay so this is how the uh, checksum is calculated and for that we use crc scheme then you have a uh, uh, authentication uh, access control is uh, governed by this uh, authentication mechanism web uses a challenge response handshake based on the pre shared keys so here you have challenge response handshake mechanism as we had in the client server communication okay and uh, you have along with this pre shared keys pre shared keys which are used in this challenge response scheme okay like we have seen the handshaking process in the ssl uh, layer uh, where uh, uh, where a client and server communicate by uh, exchanging certain number of messages to in order to auth uh, authenticate it uh, themselves the access point is not going to authenticate those messages which are coming without any encryption so this is how the web enforces these three parameters which are sufficient for providing the privacy of the data there are two ways of access control in the ieee standard 802.11 11 which is basically uh, um, the web comes under this standard one way of uh, giving access or authenticating 
a device or a client is the open system authentication this is the first way and here only two messages are exchanged between the client and the access point and client is your device your wireless device and uh, you are going to exchange only two messages here you do not have any password for the authentication you have do not have any pin or you do not have any mechanism you just uh, the access point just sends the router advertisement and the client responds to that with its mac address only so when we see an open uh, access point you must have experienced you find some open access point and uh, you just click on that open access point and you uh, simply uh, connect it to that access point where do, you do not require any key or any pin or any password so in that case what client is exchanging a client is sending its mac address to the access point and here access point accesses the wireless device without verifying its identity so the access point do not verify which particular device is connecting to it and uh, this uh, without verifying the identity it can be an attacker so the device which is connecting in the open system the attacker can even connect so that is not a default case by default we always keep some key okay so another way of uh, uh, authenticating certain uh, some device in the wireless networks uh, is shared key authentication in the shared key authentication mechanism we have a pre shared key first the user will set a key and that key is as set by the user it is also shared with the access point a challenge response scheme happens to authenticate the client so here as i said the challenge response the client service kind of communication happens here here the authentication basically works on the knowledge of shared key and in this scheme a random challenge is generated when we say the challenge response a random challenge is generated and what is this random challenge this random challenge is basically a nonce a nonce is generated from the access point and the client when receives the nonce the client will encrypt this nonce with the shared key and sends it back to the access point the access point will decrypt that response received from the client and compare it with the original nonce that it has that it had sent if the two nonces they match then the client is allowed to access fine so this is what we call a challenge response uh, scheme and here as uh, we use rc4 algorithm which generates 128 bit challenge or the 128 bit nonce rc4 is a stream cipher that we use here for generation of the 128 bit nonce and uh, the limitation of this particular scheme where we have shared key authentication uh, shared key authentication it has limitation as only access point is authenticating the client okay so the access point is having a knowledge that uh, it is allowing the uh, the client that is an authentic client that is an legitimate client but the client is not knowing whether it is connecting to an to a legitimate uh, access point or not okay so it suffers from man in the middle attack at is it is a unilateral uh, challenge response scheme so it is unilateral channel uh, challenge response scheme and because of that man in the middle attack is possible here unilateral means only one entity is authenticating the other not both the entities are authenticating which means that only access point is authenticating the client but not the client okay so that's the limitation of this scheme next is the privacy of data uh, as we know that web uses rc4 symmetric key cipher algorithm to generate a pseudo random data sequence so it uses as i said it uses uh, rc4 algorithm to generate pseudo random sequences pseudo random sequences are generated and uh, these pseudo random sequences are known as key stream key stream and then this key stream is zored with the plain text okay it is zored with the plain text uh, and uh, the plain text the data that you want to transmit and you will get your cipher text 
and then to this cipher text cipher text you append it with the iv okay cipher text along with the iv then you transmit it fine and this iv is transmitted in clear and is used to generate a key stream at the receiving end for decryption so i will draw a structure for this encryption and uh, decryption process in the web how it happens so let me draw the structure So here is the uh, uh, encryption and decryption process in the web which provides the data privacy. So first you have the play load, your plain text that uh, from which we are going to uh, we are going to uh, calculate our uh, uh, checksum by using some CRC generation algorithm and that checksum what we calculate is uh, appended with the payload and you will get your packet and you uh, further what you do is you draw this packet with the this particular entity uh, that is generated from the IV and uh, IV is your installation vector and then you concatenate IV with the pre-shared key here and then you apply this hole to the RC4 algorithm from which you will get key stream uh, gen uh, generated and you will draw it here with the this packet and after that you are going to your, get your cipher text this cipher text is uh, concatenated with the initialization vector which is a 24 bit quantity which is coming from this upside and then you will have your IV concatenated with the CTA that is your cipher text and finally you are going to transmit this thing towards the receiver side. In the receiver side here you have receiver and you will receive as you had transmitted IV and CT so IV and CT you will receive and from this IV you will apply a key and you will concatenate this key with IV and then this whole thing will be provided to the RC4 algorithm you will get the key stream and on the other side you are uh, zoring this key stream with the cipher text here and you are going to get plain text which will be having the contents as CRC and payload you will again calculate CRC here by applying the CRC algorithm and then both the CRCs will be compared if they are same then you have received the uh, communication without any errors if they, uh, there is any bit error then the communication is false then it is it has been altered so this is the uh, scheme of encryption and decryption in the web that is your wireless equivalent privacy standard by default the key size the cryptographic key size in the web is 40 bit so uh, but as we are using rc4 algorithm so rc4 algorithm will support 104 bit key also and the, in the uh, some versions uh, the some latest versions of this you can have 104 bit key to uh, you can use for the privacy of data but unfortunately this 802 dot 11 standard that does not identify any means of key management or key distribution so we are not uh, sure how the key is managed and how the key is distributed in this particular scheme next is the insecurities of web what, uh, although it is providing uh, security to our data it is uh, making our data private but there are certain some uh, there are certain in insecurities of this standard First one is key stream reuse. The key stream used to uh, encrypt the plain text message is generated by the RC4 algorithm uh, and from the initialization vector. So the cipher text, so we obtain uh, cipher text here is equal to plain text that is odd with the, uh, the the content which are received by applying RC4 algorithm over IV over IV and key okay so this is how we will get plain text here P is the plain text IV is the initialization vector and K is the pre-shared key that is fixed K is fixed uh, since K is fixed so 
some key stream is generated where IV is collide. Okay, when we uh, see same IVs will collide, then same key stream will be generated and same key stream will be uh, reused. And also, uh, the, this IV is uh, sometimes constant when we have uh, the devices from different vendors, they keep the IV uh, as hardwired and that is constant. And when you have this fixed key and this IV is also constant, then you are going to get the same key stream uh, each time. So, uh, that's going to be a problem uh, each time after some time you will repeat the key and also the IV is a 24 bit number that is a short number that is not that long number that can be compromised next is your linear checksum so uh, checksum uh, that we uh, computed on the payload uh, it is uh, linear and it is not cryptographically secure it is not cryptographically secure okay like your uh, cryptographic hash functions like your MAC codes it is not secure so that is uh, another insecurity of web next is IVV is transmitted in clear as we saw in the uh, previous diagrams I we are not encrypting IV so the attacker knows 24 bits uh, of every packet then it can guess the other bits also by using the crypt analysis that is going to be another insecurity of web lack of key management and key distribution so we do not have uh, anything defined in this standard that is 802.11 about key management and key distribution how the key is managed how is the key is distributed so that's uh, another problem that happens in web next is no defense against replay attack once the attacker uh, records a web encrypted message then the attacker can illegally use it later on uh, a multiple number of times to get the access it uses same key for encryption and decryption uh, as it is a symmetric key encryption so the key is same uh, once the key is uh, compromised then you can use for the subsequent session use of static web keys many users sharing the same key uh, for the longer period of time and uh, that is a well-known uh, vulnerability of such networks and if a device is lost the key could be compromised along with all other computers that share the same key so many users sharing the same key makes large amount of traffic available to eavesdropping for analysis 802 does not specify how ivs are set or changed okay there's no particular mechanism how the ivs are set or how the ivs are initialized and uh, if if it is uh, hardwired and uh, if the vendors they are uh, keeping it constant then you are going to have the same IV, you have the, the fixed key, and you are going to get the same key stream. So that's going to be a problem. No mutual authentication. As it is it is having a unilateral authentication, there is no mutual authentication. Only one party is, is authenticating the other, not the both the parties. So that's going to be a problem. Use of stream cipher, which is inherently weak. As the stream cipher, they are considered uh, weak as compared to the block cipher. So that is again uh, considered as the one of the insecurities of the web so uh, this is all about web how web provides security what are the encryption and decryption mechanisms in web and what are the insecurities of web that's all in, in this lecture so thank you for watching